So this is seven, I would say six years. I think I was a year after I moved here. And then I'm in a uh, very full, up until including chair. Six years. Five at least. I'm no longer counting. Yeah. <laughs> um, my name is John Campbell. Um, I've been on the commission, I think, for three years. Um, I live off of Blackstone and I have. Um, two kids in the school district, they're both on the Water Devils, um, and I also work for Murray County Parks, which kind of lends itself to uh, the, the background to park management and space management. So, but I very, feel very grateful to be part of this group, and uh, yeah, so welcome. Thanks. Without having Likewise. And I'm John Toon, and I've been on the commission Longer than John, but less touching. <laughs> <laughs> this more. This more. Uh, I have a history in, in park maintenance. I was a superintendent for the city of San Rafael, and I was there city arborist as well. And I'm retired. And my kids up and gone and grown a long time ago. I guess I moved into the neighborhood in '91. So you know, I remember the days when I didn't have this stuff to light. There was no light there. <laughs> um, okay, I guess uh, moving on to our um, next item would be the approval of our minutes of our previous meeting on March 26th. I'll make motion to move to take that. All in favor? Aye. Okay, we can now review, we're going to review the uh, minutes of the June 11th board meeting. Any, anything from that meeting? Um, I just had a question, but was there a sheriff at that meeting? Yes. There was? Was there an issue? Yes. There was. Um, I thought I saw something in the minutes of it, but then I think I saw something like that. I wasn't there, something that could be explained or um, just doesn't matter with the member of the public not uh, agreeing to abide by basic meeting rules and obviously with the interruptions and warnings and the sheriff had to intervene and let him know that uh, he doesn't want to remove him from the meeting, but he will have asked. That's about it. Yeah. It's not okay. direct the power issues. Yeah. Okay. So we'll uh, serves that we continue to continue? Will he continue? Yeah, you'll we'll continue. Share a time um, I certainly hope so because it seemed to have defused the situation at the moment. Yeah. And it seems like um, everybody feels a little bit, I don't know, I, I 
I'm not going to speak for everybody, but I certainly feel a little bit more secure having a safety backup because it's always a touch and go situation. There's clearly a necessity. Seems to be from the industry. Well, it's too bad we have to waste money like this. I'm doing the when they are present, the meetings seem to go a little bit uh, more smooth. Yeah. You know, just they operate more efficiently, I guess is a better way for me to put it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions on anything on that? That was it. Uh, item number five, the uh, 2019 facility inspections and process is a discussion. Um, Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, th this is regarding touring the facilities and what we've done in the past and whether or not we should continue in the future. And I had um, emailed Eric and just mentioned that um, maybe maybe it wasn't necessary to tour the facilities and maybe what could happen would be you know, Luke could provide us with a stats report on each of the facilities and maybe we could discuss or you know if Luke had specific concerns about something and was looking for opinions or advisement how to move forward we can discuss that. Um, I think photographs are always great like if we were able to photograph certain things that may be problematic. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the parts of the discussion Eric and I had that we're all pretty familiar with the facilities due to the tenure of this board and, and we're all obviously in the neighborhood and can also go view the facilities ourselves. Um, I'll also add that when I was a park supervisor in San Francisco, I would be the recipient of other people's evaluations. They would walk through my parks and kind of do this evaluation form of what it needed and what it didn't need. I didn't particularly find it very helpful because I knew everything that needed doing. I just, it wasn't necessarily a priority for me to do some of the things they were asking for. Um, so, and I, I kind of expect that you also know your facilities really well and have a pretty good sense of what needs doing. We could point out something, but you probably already know about it. Um, so I would also ask, do you find them useful? Because if you find them useful, then I would be willing to continue to, to do those facility tours, but if you didn't, I think a, a report from you would work for me as well. I think, uh, to, yeah, to speak to that, uh, it would be, I think, doing something more of a presentation with, with visuals, you know, photos or even, you know, maybe some video or something to you know, like look at something a little bit more in depth would be helpful to highlight here's where we are, here's what we're working towards, and here's, you know, here's how long this particular facility has been here, here's what we're hoping to do in the future, we'd love some feedback on what we ought to be doing in these different things, and here's some of the challenges. You know, I like kind of have it a little bit more structured. When we go out on the facility tours, it does seem a little bit chaotic, and some of the feedback ends up sort of being arbitrary because it's like, oh, there's that thing, there's that thing. It was hard to get like an overview, so I think we, I could probably structure that a little better in a presentation than when we actually walk out there with a big group. But So I, I, I'm in agreement with that. Okay. Um, if I could just tag on to that, one, one of the thought I had about was, in thinking about this was kind of our role, like what are, what are we here to do, and I, and I feel like we're an advisory board, so we can kind of weigh in on um, certain you know policies or fees like you know we worked on the IPM policy early on and other things like that but I don't particularly see my role and I'm actually kind of stating this looking for clarification from you guys as well but I don't see necessarily my role as prioritizing your work and like pointing things out to you that needs doing and you know as an example a couple of years back I worked on the planting plan over by the oak tree to kind of beautify that area. And I, I actually kind of regretful that I was involved in that now because it, it really doesn't look very good and it's, it doesn't look like it's being maintained. And I don't blame you guys or the staff, it just may not have been a priority for you, that, that whole area. And, you know, because other areas, the, the playground and the, the ring up front, and 
it looks great. So by, by me getting involved in that, I was kind of changing your priorities and maybe mm -hmm. what other time that you could have been spending on other things. So I, I guess I kind of wonder, like, moving forward, I don't know if I'd necessarily do that, or did you, I mean, you weren't here, it was Shane, but you know, maybe you guys could, I'm kind of curious to hear other people's thoughts on that. I, I know we talked briefly a couple of months ago about the topic of our role and, and specifically the tours and you know after doing them for at least in my perspective for five or six years they felt yeah, I never really felt to be honest with you I never felt comfortable doing them they always felt like we were one it's a moment in time and then so you think oh look at this screw is loose it's like well it wasn't loose yesterday um, and it got a little too like punch listy like very um, like just not big picture enough for me. It's like, I, I don't know, I, I just, I didn't like doing them, personally. We did them by obligation, um, but I felt like, like you said, like what's our role as an advisory board? Is it to really go through and like look for, you know, a damaged thing somewhere to make sure that you're aware of it on one given day of the year? Uh, doesn't seem very efficient use of time for staff or for us. Um, I do like the perspective of, of being an advisory board, of us having a you know a report that's documented and we can give advice. I like working on policy pieces. I think that's another like what role does the commission play? Um, is to advise the the board of directors with input from staff. Um, so I don't know. So I, I agree with you. I I agree with that uh, with that approach. Um, I also agree that maybe from a you know standpoint we can look at policies that relate to that, right? So we can look at the pest management one again, because it's been a while, um, or some of the other ones and, and have that more of a structure. And then and then on the flip side, and I'll wrap to wrap up is, you know, if we were gonna look at beautification projects or, or landscaping or design, I would think it would be reversed in that you would come to us and say, Hey, I'm thinking about doing we wanna look at this area. And then we go and make a, you know have opinions or use the, the knowledge of in this instance John and John to, to to really be like subject matter experts and then go forward from there instead of us arbitrarily picking an area. So those are just kind of how kind of putting all these things together. Those are my, I don't know how you feel. Well, no, I think that the three of us are really of, of a like mind because I think the issue out there is it's just too narrow of a focus. We just like you say we see it one night of the year, one evening of the year, and we have to look at the big picture. And not only just that area, big picture, but all the other area, big picture. So, I mean, certainly, you guys know what you're doing out there, you know what it means, you know what you can do, when you can do it. If you want our input on anything specific, then we're sitting here. But, I, you know, I don't think we need to, and, and the point that we can also view the area mm -hmm. prior or anytime we want. So if we have items or issues that we feel need to be brought to your attention, then we have that, that opportunity still exists. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we're, you know, I think we're all pretty much in agreement that. Uh, and then I, th I think this stated that. Uh, this would be something about the remainder of the year? Tours for this year? I don't, I don't know if we want to look at this and say just this year, or whether we want to say, no, we don't need to do it in the future. Yeah. You know, I, future. I, I want to add just one other thing to think about of that, and then we can talk about when and how and if we go forward with this plan, is I do, I do want to add, and you can say how you feel about this, is if you come to us and say, and let's say it's not the summer, Right. Let's just say it's October. Let's say it's February. This is there's this thing that's coming up in this area of the of the CSD. You know, it, it obviously it's agendized in advance, and you, and you request us to do a site tour. Let's say then we do that. You know, as on a, as a case by case basis. Like so, if you can do it via documentation, great. If you need us to be there because it's whatever, then I think we're also willing to do it. It's just not the this current structure. Doesn't seem to fit on fill a need. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, right? no, no, certainly, I think we, we could either meet as a group if needed, or just when you send out the 
you know, this upcoming agenda for the next meeting that, you know, this is an issue on the agenda and if you, mm -hmm. you know, asking us to take the opportunity to mm -hmm. look at it before the meeting mm -hmm. so that, you know, we may be able to just all view it individually and come back and discuss it or whether it needs to be as a, you know, a whole group and look at it. So, yeah, I think we're open to any options that right. make things I think that that's, that actually is helpful. I mean, it is helpful, I think, and, and worthwhile to look at the different um, facilities that, that we have in our purview and uh, to see where they are, what the goal is, what we're trying to do, what we've been doing, what are the challenges, and, and if there is something that we're trying to move towards to get input. I think that's a helpful exercise for me and the staff to just not just you know, continue going through the motions of well, our normal maintenance, but to actually have an excuse to sit down and do a report and say, you know, where are we at on this, and what's what's the next step, and what are we looking to do, and, and, then to, and to present that. I think that, that helps us look at it with sort of a fresh perspective, and then gives an opportunity for conversation about it. I do think that's valuable. I do like the idea of doing it here, um, unless there is a reason to come out there, because it'll help organize it in a way that we can talk about it um, less sort of shooting from the hip and just like, oh, there's that, there's that, and, and I was going out there just sort of hoping you guys don't have too many complaints here or whatever, you know, we can actually look at it a little more systematically, which I think would be beneficial for everybody, so. And then, I'm sorry, and then, um, I had one more thought that I had about potentially ways of organizing the, this new, let's say, potentially virtual tour kind of report, is that in, potentially instead of doing it by site, we do it by topic, right? So, for example, it's helpful if it's on about tennis courts, because right now we do them in, isn't there two sets, there's one up at the other one, so we, we talk about that one, and so, like, it would be, like, to get a status update if we did it annually in certain months. Here we are, we have a lot of tennis courts. This is where the schedule they're on, this is, this one's getting a top coat, this one needs five more years, like what those things are. Here are all playground structures. Here's the one, the structure here, here's a structure at the mini park, here blah, blah, blah. Here's the one at this one, here's pictures of them all. So like you can also kind of get into a mindset mm -hmm. of, that we're talking about this type of thing, and that it, here they are in the district, and we can, you know, and then look at them, and then we can start looking at them as, as a, in a life cycle, in you know, in relation to well, that one over there is ten years old. This one over here is twelve years old, and so we can organize it that way too as an option instead of by literally by just by location. Yeah, just sure. yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It, it, yeah, that could make sense, and I, I think it depends on the topic. I sure. That's in my my day job. That's what I do with our open space commission. Is I present annually on roads and trails program programmatically throughout the whole county. And so I take that piece and do that. And then we have, you know, somebody else that will do presentations to them on parks and specifically okay. tennis courts. And right. So yeah, yeah, that's not uncommon to do that. You mean you're not hiking all the roads and trails with you? you know, it's, it's <laughs> funny. It's funny, today I got an email for my first um, public open space commission meeting in the field. And, and there was very specific instructions in there about how the public was to get there, and if they couldn't get there, transportation could be provided. But it's not common at all. So right. yeah, um, typically the presentations <coughs> in the chamber talk. Right. Yeah, so it's... I think as well, actually, if we, if we wanted to put it there. I just wanted to add that I, I love where this conversation is going, but it's also an illustration of how the commission has transformed over the years. Because even um, you know, just you know, ten years—not even ten years back, five years back, you know, maybe—it um, was much more active in day-to-day, -day, um, you know, operations. Where um, we also had many new faces on the commission, and um, I personally did benefit from from the tours because I was not familiar with some of the. Um, areas that we ended up inspecting. Having said that, um, you know, given that we all know what we're talking about um, and we have seen it, I understand that you know the haphazard one random day in the year of an inspection, and um, indeed, this way of doing things will 
hopefully help the Commission transition from the more operational type to the more proactively planning and um, hopefully giving look an opportunity to sit down with staff and say, okay, so, you know, I, I remember um, there was a, a report, I think, when um, what's our park managers? Gary? Gary. When Gary was leaving, we prepared like this big document that was like an overview of, of, of our property, so to speak. And it would be more like by, okay, so tennis courts, this is where we stand, this is like kind of short background, this is what we do on a daily basis, this is what we would like to do long term. Do we have funds for it? Do we need to, you know, look into it? How do we plan our expenditures in this in this area? Trees, you know, we used to have X amount in do dollars. Now we have so much, but the need is such. Um, you know, maybe we can narrow down the types of trees that we would want to look at, you know, planting, and not as a commission. You as right. you know, with mm -hmm. staff. Um, you know, you identify the, you know, the priority areas and the areas of focus because you see the greater plan. And the, the one concern I have with this type of operation, and, and again, it totally works for you guys, but I hope that we don't, like, we still st stay in touch with what's happening because it's, it's very, um, likely that we could distance ourselves to become kind of just like a, um, you know we approve whatever and we are not really we don't really know anymore what we're talking about because we're not familiar with it that much but that's kind of one concern that I would have out there but um, overall I think it's again it's very illustrative of how the Commission and the board is evolving over the years yeah, if I, I'll just add to that. I, you know, I think my main concern is I don't like I don't know what you guys do day to day, and so I, I I'm really cautious about maybe you know unintentionally micromanaging by like pointing things out because I don't have the full scope of your priorities. It's, you do though, so you you know like where things fall on the sense of priorities. Mm -hmm. I'm and I, I speak for myself, and I'm sure the others would agree that. We we want to be involved when you know if you have questions or you know we, we all have different backgrounds but I think we could offer opinions and advice when you're looking for one but if if you feel like you you know the day to day operations is just kind of like okay these are the things I need to take care of I just don't want to get I don't want to muddy that up I want to you know well no I very much appreciate that I think. Mean, yeah, I, I like the idea of structuring in a way that we can look at it in that light, or as here's the th questions we have, here's some of, here's certain areas where we do want direction and feedback because you know some of the stuff affects the whole community and like who, who am I to like oh we're gonna do this we're gonna plant this we're gonna make this you know some of the stuff does I think need uh, or warrants more conversation and more input so. I love the idea of utilizing uh, the commission as a resource for input, and you know, and then potentially some things might might warrant board you know input, and, and so I think yeah, I, I love that idea of um, of structuring in a way that, that facilitates that and make, takes takes advantage of the, the resources. So you know, maybe another situation um, would be you know um, we had a member of the public comment several times about a pathway that. Um, interfaced with the, uh, the panhandle pathway. And so I think in those types of situations in the future, what I would do is look to staff and say, you know, like, give us a report on this and a recommendation. And then at that point, you know, you might say offline, like, oh, I'm not exactly sure what to do. And then we, we could all go and look at it. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, no, I think that's a step for sure, exactly. Right. Can I add a few? To, no. A few more than two cents. Okay. Uh, to answer John Toon's question, I think me personally, and I kind of go, you know, I put myself in Isabella's shoes a little bit. When I first got here, those tours did help me. 
because even though you say, oh, we can go out and look at it, this forced you to go out and see some area. You know, I would have never cruised out to Freakside Park if it wasn't for that. So I think in some ways, the makeup of the commission kind of dictates, so to say, let's just cancel them forever. Um, you never know. It might there might come a time down the line where it might be useful. If, you know, it flips. Now you have more people who are new to the commission than are long-standing. Whatever the case may be, I think I'll use Anne for an example. If she decides to come onto the commission and the board appoints her, she can easily rendezvous with either myself or Luke, and we can take an hour here, an hour there, uh, as mutual schedules allow, and take her out to facilities uh, and parks and things like that just to give her a, a better uh, understanding of what it is we're doing on site because reports are nice but when you go there and you look at it it's easy for you to take a report and put it into context because you know those areas so very well uh, I think one thing that would be down the line I don't think any of this personally uh, or directly matters for this year um, but I think if we're looking at some level of a change, then you're going to look at producing some level of a bylaw amendment uh, because the bylaws for the PNR Commission do state this will happen annually during the summer months. So, some slight rewording that could be polished and finalized by the Commission, recommended to the board for final approval that states, you know, either tours and or you know reports because um, the tours are really looking at land facility. Um, I like, you know, Shane Valentine got me thinking on other things of, because everything we just talked about was kind of land and facility, um, park world, um, you know, it would be nice during some of those other months, and this is where Luke kicks me under the table, but, you know, maybe even just some reports on, you know, program, programmatic things or community event calendars. Here's what we have planned, here's what's coming up, Who's, you know, maybe, you know, where do we have some gaps, are there things that we should be considering, things we should be considering removing from, you know, uh, maybe that adult programming is the same boat. Um, and then, like I said, for new commissioners, uh, by request or as needed, um, one of the things I'd like to, before we walk, get a little bit of a, just so that way we're producing reports that the commission feels is you know revisiting these headings that we kind of put in here and making sure that you know if we covered these headings and I already added a bullet point for photographs and or video um, and then something I added a little dash line here which is where Shane got me thinking about it because he said my topic i.e. tennis courts uh, all that stuff just leads to capital as opposed to programmatic um, so I'd like a little bit of feedback on that and then like I said if we're going to look at something in a long term view I think it would be prudent to at a future meeting coming up uh, examine the bylaw language uh, and I could put together some draft uh, amendment to it that could get polished up in a meeting setting and eventually uh, picked upstairs. So could uh, for an agreement to forego this year doing that? In, in the spring, could we, at a some meeting, make a decision on whether this year we need to walk or yeah this year we yeah based we on what I think we could, we'd have a few factors to consider because by that time, if you're looking at like say February March time, Luke and myself have a good handle on hey, if there's some major upcoming things at some of these facilities or what that may be plus uh, plus the makeup of the commission. Yeah. And, and if I may add, it's actually, you know, the structure of, of our fiscal calendar will lend itself uh, to looking at the programmatic component okay. of the recreation after the end of fiscal when you can review, you know, what performed well, what can we cut, what can we modify versus the park, which, you know, we can leave for other months. This way, you will not be swamped with pro pro producing one ginormous report. You know, once a year, maybe we can just break it up somehow. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Uh, yeah, no, it's an excellent point. And then as far as your uh, kind of the topics, I, I guess maybe I would like to see uh, vandalism and, and what kind of response that, that require to, to kind of, I mean, that may fall under one of these categories, or but just, you know, what things are, going wrong in that direction, it's nice to you 
you know, sometimes you have to step up a little more to stop it and, you know, just, so, I just, I, I hate to not go out there and not see something and all this stuff has been going on for a year and it's like, you know, we just, you know, so I, I think I would add maybe something like that or some topic under one of these things or something. Okay. I think it gives us areas to start and uh, we can certainly get rolling with this and I can help them out on the chief once. Um, and we'll just kind of start looking at, since we're foregoing tours, kind of rather suddenly we'll look at these areas and then once we get through those, look at some of these other kind of by topic, uh, which I think gets a little bit uh, even more specific on very types of facilities that maybe are located in multiple places, uh, you know, play structure report, events report, report, whatever, or uh, programmatically, uh, or events or something like that. Um, and it gives some kind of during those downloads to the region. So that at a future meeting we would uh, kind of come up with the specifics of whether, I mean, can we just do, do they can be evolving with everybody. Right. Yeah, I mean, they can certainly be evolving. I just, the more we know of what type of information you're looking for up front, the better we're going to be able to produce what you're looking for. Now, until you go through a few of these and say, oh, yeah, this would be actually helpful stuff that we haven't kind of seen highlighted in these reports yet, or, yeah, this, not so much. You know, I don't, I don't need the boilerplate copy paste here. So uh, it, can, it can evolve from report to report. Right? Well, I guess what I'm not clear on is this is just a, a you know, we can take no action on, on this. It's just our discussion. But if, it, if the bylaws require us to do this, if, the, if, I, may, if I may recommend, um, uh, you will, based, based on your discussion on the other subject matter, whether to switch to bylaw cleaning or not, you, you may or may not have to look at the bylaws anyway. Um, so the, the bylaws, we should rewrite the you know, physical inspection to something more of like receiving presentation or whatever. Maybe it doesn't have to be in the, in, the, in the bylaws at all because then it would be not really what, well, let's just say commission re receives reports from, mm -hmm. you know, from the staff, uh, let's say, annually you know, on the park in one uh, month and on the recreation component in the other month, whatever, you know, or we can spread it out a little bit more. I, I also think that, um, I don't know if it's necessary for us to, it might be helpful to look to, to tell him what exactly would be like to see. Um, so we know like the areas, but what kind of information you Looking for? Do you want to discuss it specifically at the next meeting, or do you want to just give them guidance now? I mean, right now, I, I kind of feel like every meeting we're going to learn more about the facility, right? The maintenance facility. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of on everyone until it gets built. Every meeting, right? Um, every like as a separate standalone agenda item. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as things uh, as developments occur, yes. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, like we, <laughs> I, I brought photos in <laughs> when I do presentations, but like, I think like, if you guys have photos of things you're talking about at that site, yeah, that's helpful. At the 100%. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we put together. Yeah, I mean, whenever, whenever I do present, whenever I go to the commission meetings in my day job, I always have a presentation. Not to say, I don't, I'm not trying to create more work for you guys either, but the visuals are super helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let us see what we can put together for the next meeting. Um, and always use that as a uh, uh, evolution document, too. So the next meeting we'll have something we take action on it and then go to the board? Yeah, well, I think your next steps are, uh, I don't think personally you need an action to not do the tours this year, especially if you're considering that we're already at the June meeting, haven't done any of these tours. I, I don't think you need a formal action to say no tours. Um, and I think Isabella made really good points in the bylaws as I, I, I would have to reread them really quickly, but you can either just remove that section or instead of we'll go on tours, you know, we'll have a few choices. The commission will either tour facilities, receive uh, detailed reports from 
staff for each of the facilities, but you know, I mean, just so that way you're not pinned into one thing, right. yet you're not neglecting that thing by any stretch either. It's still, it still is a direction that you're going to receive and comment on a level of information received, whether that is you're receiving it visually through a tour or you're receiving it through a uh, presentation. Um, and you know, I think a PowerPoint would make more sense than a big, long, written out presentation most likely. Yeah, you know, just some yeah. quick bullet points and we can sit through that way. Yeah. Yeah. And there may be locations that you want us to come out and look at. Yeah. And there may be Absolutely. that we can sit here and see it on the screen. No, you're 100% right. But I, I think like, you know, kind of short, of kind of background of on the issue, mm -hmm. um, the budget you have to play with, mm -hmm. the needs mm -hmm. that are there, it may be what, exactly what the budget allows or maybe less, more, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, like the, the daily you know, maintenance is this, but you know, the grant plan is this, or you know, our vision is that you know, our staff and I would like to, for it to become X. Yeah. That's kind of my... Yeah, uh, yeah. we'll work on something. It's an uber busy time, but we'll get something together by next meeting. And uh, I am sure that they will become better each time they come out. Yeah. Just, it's just... Yeah, well, yeah please. Just one comment. Um, if, if everyone's not sure whether next year and go forward, we want to do reports or tours, if the somewhat of the structure of going by location is maintained it's easier to flip back to that going on tour and looking by location versus if if everything goes totally programmatic this year then it's a little harder than flip back into a location format so just a thought and I, i'm not you know have a strong opinion either way but just a consideration for how to manage your meetings and workflow so if everything's done programmatically this year and then next year everyone says hey i actually really want to do the walks then it has to, to kind of shift back again, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just a thought as you organize the reports, right? Yeah, and I think to the points that you all made is you're kind of playing to the strengths uh, as well as the tenures of the current commission makeup. Right. You know, if the three of you guys leave uh, tomorrow and we have to go out and get five brand new people, it might make more sense to get out there and see some sites with them as a group. Okay, that is helpful, and then I will, so next steps, like I said, is we'll actually put together something, and then I will look at, uh, and take a better crack at the uh, bylaw language, try to massage that a little bit, maybe John, um, as the chair, I'll send you some suggestions, you give me some feedback, we'll go from there. Okay. Great. Anything else? I don't think so, let's just... I'm moving on. Uh, next is, it is an action item, so we can't do something. <laughs> uh, this is the uh, Park and Rec Commissioner meeting schedule, uh, potentially modifying it for bi monthly meetings. Uh, uh, Eric sent out the memo. Um, one thing to clarify that we would go to the odd months, so that would excuse us from our normal December, everyone's off, so we would then meet again next month, starting July, and go every other month off of that. Uh, how do you feel about that, Shane? That makes sense to you? Yeah, I mean, I just be honest with you, I am, it's a mix because it depends on, on honestly, the direction of where, it's, they kind of interrelate and relate to what the function of the commission is as an advisory board, um, that makes recommendations, um, or is it a little, or is it a little more active? Because of my, I don't know if I'm being biased of being here, you know, like you were saying about the tenure of all, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean, like, I feel like in our current makeup that we can get it done in six meetings, considering when we get into some type of flow. That being said. New, new people coming on, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So I, I, in our current structure, makeup, I agree with that. I think that can't make sense. Uh, it's mixed, I, I mixed. 
Well, I guess my one concern would be because we're such a small commission that if yes, no, no, we would skip a month and then the next month I'm on vacation. It's going to be a long time before mm -hmm. you know we're back again. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, if we have people that are interested in joining us, that will you know we'll have, we'll have a little room for for air. One of us is gone, but we're we're still able to. Right. You know, right. hold a meeting. So, you know, I, I don't think optimistically on that. That uh, that would be my one concern is if being as shorthanded, boy, we don't do one meeting and then for some reason you're four months. We can't do another and it's an excellent project right now. Mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah. mm -hmm. so to that point, maybe it makes more sense to recognize with a small commission, even if you add one more, you're still. But, you know, there's a reason that there's five regular and an alternate. So that way right. your odds of having a quorum are much, much, much greater. Uh, yeah. I will say that this has been discussed uh, by the fire commission initially. Uh, and I know in talking with, uh, you know, some of you just on an individual basis, this has kind of come up a little bit of, you know, with this. Uh, part of this is just trying to be creative in terms of recruitment, too. Uh, because, I mean, I put out some notices and they got, you know, on our Facebook, on Nextdoor, on our website, put them up there, everywhere I could think of. Um, and I literally got zero hits off of that. Um, people were sharing our Facebook posts. I mean, nothing came through. So I'm just trying to remove all uh, barriers to entry as possible. Um, and if people say, oh, okay, and every other month commitment is a lot easier. Yet, you know, I, mean, I, I, I don't know if that's a real barrier, though. I, I don't disagree with you personally, John. You know, it's an hour, hour and a half a month. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal, yeah. plus any extra time, uh, which all three of you have always been willing to put in if we reach out and say, hey, can you meet with me offline for something you've all always done? It. So it's, uh, uh, I, again, it was something that had come up, so it's just pushing out. I, I don't necessarily have a recommendation personally on this. Um, and I think you bring up an excellent point, John and Isabella, um, in that uh, as long as this commission stays as small as it is, we're going to be missing meetings by default anyway. Right. That's, I mean, that I would expect as we move through the summer that, you know, we're lucky to get a couple in. And yeah. We're just, I, I agree with that. I, I feel like if we move to every other month, I would feel really bad if I was, I was not able to come on the month that we were scheduled to meet because then, yeah, and I feel like that's possible, that one of us still, especially going into the summer, mm -hmm. I, I would, yeah, so I would advocate for just living it the way it is. Well, that sounds like that conversation for this point in time is over. Excuse me. Any other comments? So then we make a motion and it would be to You don't even need a motion. Keep things the way they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a motion for that. <laughs> You're fine. No action is actually. Yeah. I don't know, it is an action item. So I don't know. It's an action item, but if there's nothing put on the table, if there's no motion. Oh there is no motion, okay. To do it then there is no action. So right, the okay. status quo remains. So yeah, no motion. Easy. Uh, next, we're going to hear from Mr. Fred all about the Recreation Park Maintenance Activity Report. Thank you. Uh, well, this uh, is our second week of our summer programming, and um, uh, so far it's gone extremely well. And uh, sort of the, the top main focus right now is. Um, managing the, the giant uh, summer camp program in the pool and, and all of the many staff we have working right now. It's, um, it's my favorite time of year. Uh, it's just this giant living, breathing thing that, that we get to um, sort of manage and finesse. And um, yeah, it's in first week went off um, uh, extremely well. And I'm very proud of Robin and Stephanie and how well they've been managing their staffs and, um, and how uh, well the camps have been going and, and the pool. I was here, I, I, I stopped by on Sunday uh, to the pool, I was camping, I just kept coming through town on my way home and I stopped by, I knew it was going to be hot and came in and I believe Sunday may have been our busiest day 
ever, um, at least in, in, in recent history since I've been around. And um, it, the Hamilton pool was closed for some reason. The Terralytic pool turned people away. I think they were capacity by 11 o'clock in the morning. So all of the people started flooding in. And, uh, and so I stuck around for a little bit just to sort of help out. But um, I was, um, it, yeah, the place was, was extremely busy. And, um, and the staff were just dynamite. I was so proud of how everyone uh, handled that and managed it. And they got through, stayed open through the end of the day. Uh, thankfully, we didn't go over capacity, but um, it was just nice to be able to accommodate all the people that were shut away from the other from the other pools, and, um, and the staff were uh, very vigilant, and, and the customer service was excellent. So um, that was very encouraging to, to see, especially as I was taking a step a step back from the pool. Um, and our new supervisor Stephanie is had everyone really well trained, and um, they were they were really on it. And uh, even though it was like 90, 92 degrees, and the place was about as busy as, I, as I've ever seen. Were you when are you there on, on Sunday? When there on Sunday? No, I haven't seen you, but uh, yeah, it was crazy. But um, so uh, the pool's been, been going great. Camps have um, have similarly been going have been growing great, and um, it's a it's a good start to the to the summer. So that's the that's the main report is we're very happy with with uh, the staff and and the programs seem to be. Um, on their way to a really successful, a successful summer. Uh, this Friday, I hope you all make it to our first music in the park, uh, six to eight. It's Justin Schaefer's and the Blind Barbers. I don't have much to say about them, but I'm sure they're great. Uh, uh, and, and so we'll have an, another uh, start to our, our fun series. And um, that runs every, every other Friday um, with a break in the middle where we have our summer brew fest on Saturday the 27th. So I'm really excited for all of that uh, coming up. We do have the final lineup. I have a TBA on August 9th, but um, the lineup is now posted on our website. We'll have some signs and banners up and, um, so that we'll be kind of pushing that. Um, so uh, yeah, so far so good on, on all of the, of the summer programming. As far as the parks maintenance uh, has concerned, we've been doing a lot of last minute stuff, getting things ready. We put up these shade sails last week, uh, or I guess a little bit over a week ago. Um, we don't have the Miller Creek Middle School uh, this year. They're doing construction there, and that was um, some, somewhere where we used uh, a lot of the gym, and the, the field, the blacktop, and the bathrooms, and the drinking fountains. And so um, it's the first year, I think, that we haven't been able to use that since we started uh, renting space there. So it's been challenging to find where, where to put people. So we've been trying to get creative, and this is one of our new spots that uh, we were utilizing throughout the day. That's been going very well, and um, we actually added a, a porta potty and a, and a hand washing station that by the existing one by the tennis courts. It's been a huge help. Mm -hmm. So um, the park staff's been working on some of that, and um, uh, today we finished installing a new uh, backup heater in the pump room for the pool. We've been uh, we've had one out of commission for the last several years. And uh, we finally got that installed, so now we're going to be alternating monthly uh, to uh, working functional heaters, and which should increase the longevity, and we're no longer driving on our spare, so that makes me feel uh, a lot better about things. So that's up and running as of uh, like 11 o'clock this morning, and feeling really good about that. Um, and uh, at this point, the park staff's mainly working on um, just trying to keep things clean, and with all the 500 plus people using the the parks and the facilities every day. It's um, it's a huge job just to uh, keep all that functioning and making repairs and cleaning up. So um, they need to be busy. Uh, what's that? You said 500. Well, this last week I think I wrote in here we had 450 campers enrolled, 100 swim lesson kids. Not to mention all the regular pool um, plus staff. people plus staff, a bunch of guards and training and counselor and training participants and. Uh, and that's not our, and that's not even our busiest week. So um, yeah, it's a big, it's a big uh, production, and it's a lot of wear and tear on the facilities. So um, yeah, that's that's a big, big priority right now. Questions about any of that? Whatever came of that sinkhole? Well, right now we have it uh, fenced off because uh, it's still a, a hazardous, um, you know, potential hazardous spot. So I mean, Eric, you probably speak to this a little more about what the process is, sure. but. Um, uh, a very brief rundown. Everybody, I think, is aware of the sinkhole that's developed over there. We did a, a couple months ago, ran a camera through the entire body portion of uh, what is like 75, 80 feet of CMP piping. Uh, it's completely deteriorated and corroded through. You know, metal pipes to transport water. Eventually, the water wins. Storm drain. 
The storm bread. Yeah. yeah, underground storm bread. So Does it connect to um, Little Creek Road? Oh yeah, it connects up to all sorts of stuff. And, but, it, and then it goes to the creek? Yep, and it has a direct outfall in the creek. So it, it has several catch basins. I was able to get a map. Um, actually, I was able to pull it up via Marin map to see it. Pools from several catch basins located on Quietwood, Pinewood, and Miller Creek Road, as well as a large catch basin uh, kind of at the base of Queenstone Fire Road area mm -hmm. that is catching a lot of the that head wall of everything off the hill right there. Yeah, that we saw that day. That was basically a waterfall coming down that day. Yeah. So it's, it's running all of that. Uh, everything is RCP, reinforced concrete piping, underneath everywhere you go until the final 80 feet. Uh, where it dumps into the creek and it is our property. Uh, you know, I've kind of gone a little back and forth with the county as to, okay, so why is this my responsibility? Uh, this is pre-development. This is not disclosed, nowhere yeah, to be found. Uh, you know, but then again, they don't have an easement. And I get, at the end of the day, I'm not looking to pick a fight with the county on, on this. So, uh, is it DPW you were talking about? Yep, yeah. DPW and legal. Uh, DPW's attorney, basically. I've had similar situations with DPW where a uh, concrete B ditch culverts that they must have put them in at some point, but right. they had no record of them, we had no record of them, but they're not taking ownership. Right, so, well, yeah. and that was it. And my argument to them was okay, so the county approved the development plan. The development plan included the drainage, yeah. yet you're taking, uh, you know, so their, their line of thinking is if it's underneath the roadway, We'll deal with it. Once it leaves the quote unquote right away, it's not our problem. You know, it's up. So if this happened underneath a person's house, it would be their problem. Um, actually, the homeowner right behind there on, I can't remember if it's 495 or 505, um, a really nice guy who actually also worked for San Francisco Parks for years, uh, retired a while back. Peter? Um, Mike? Uh, lives on quiet with theirs. Really, really nice guy. I mean, you know who I'm talking about at 505? He, uh, uh, he, he wanted to be kept informed because it ran underneath his house. So I said, well, I got good news for you. You've got 30-inch uh, RCP going underneath your house. That, that stuff will last a while. Um, and then it jumps into 36. So anyway, to make a long story short, as I went through all this, got the proposal, Contacted some people like at Stormwater, Stormwater, uh, talking to Howard Bunce um, at uh, Marin County Stormwater Pollution Prevention. Um, they coordinate what's known as the Marin Project Co uh, uh, Coordination Meetings. Um, and these are private meetings, but they involve uh, representatives from all of the environmental agencies. So I wanted to get those ducks in a row, at which point uh, regional water, uh, you know, so the Water Quality Control Board. Um, and Fish and Wildlife and the Army Corps of Engineers all said, yeah, you're going to need to do what's known as a JARPA application, Joint Aquatic Resource uh, uh, permit, a permit Application. So it's one application that goes to all agencies. Uh, it's, they're fairly complex and technical applications and I need us more. So I'll make a, lot, a longer story, try to get shorter. Um, the board authorized me to contract with a consultant. I'm working with a gentleman named Matt Smeltzer. Um, it was putting it all together. It was recommended by several other agencies. Sarah Phillips recommended him highly from resource. Uh, it, I didn't have the time and we don't have time. Uh, nor did I have the expertise. It'd be a learning process for me and I don't have time for an incomplete application to get submitted. Um, it's in there now. Uh, that has been done. It is in their hands. They have 30 days to respond. They received these last Friday, um, which was very quick turnaround because it was just two weeks ago that the board authorized me to work with Matt. So he came out, met me on site. We got everything we needed. He put it together very quickly. Got in touch with the uh, vendor. Um, right now, I have a bid that's about 40,000 to do the actual work, start to finish. Um, Plus, it'll be, it'll be, oh uh, yeah. Who, who is that? Um, it's called uh, Mixus Services. It's funny because it was Public Works that actually recommended them to me. And what they're going to be doing is uh, putting in a concrete cast liner in the pipe. They're not going to be trenching it and putting in new pipe. That work would they're be. They're going to sleeve it. They're going to sleeve it inside. Uh, uh, to trench it would be, uh, you're getting into a six figure project real quick. 
uh, plus massive environmental. Uh, all of a sudden, I'm changing from a JARPA to an EIR. Uh, so it's. Uh, but I don't anticipate any problems with them. So the work's going to be about 40 grand. Um, I signed it not to exceed um, for six with Matt. I don't expect it to be that high. That's contingencies with him on if they come back. But for the permit? Six for the permit? Yeah. That seems high. Um, it, it's a it's standard. You know, it, it's an hourly thing. And a lot of that is a contingency on if they shoot it back and say, yeah. great, now based on all the information you gave us, I now want this much more information, at which point he's got to revisit, he's got to review things. But we're not going to get But when you went to the MPC meeting, you were able to present the plans of what you were proposing to do. Yeah, and they still had more questions. So we had to go back to the vendor and get even more questions. And they, the plan of what we were proposing to do, they were fine with. Right. It was all about access, staging. The, because this goes staging, everything else. Because, I mean, literally the outfall is right on the, shoots out the bank of the crew. Right. So they wanted to know about all of that and kind of stuff. So, the bank. Uh, no, they weren't concerned about stabilizing the bank. They were concerned about uh, uh, a water diversion plan, stopping water from going through the pipe, even though at this point it's just basic residential irrigation. Uh, so uh, we're hoping to do the project in September. We have no choice but to do the project, uh, literally. Otherwise, what we're going to wind up with isn't a sinkhole. We're going to wind up with a sink ravine that's going to go the whole stretch of that fencing out there because it's just literally leaching the soil out from underneath nice. for an 80 foot stretch. It's all going to collapse. It's all going to collapse. And then once we really realized what was going on was when Luke and I started talking and we decided, okay, we don't need to fence off the holes. We need to fence off the whole strip because if it's compromised here, we know there's a hole here, but 20 feet away, somebody might take a step there and straight through um, because it's just shelf on top now. Um, so we've blocked off that whole area for safety, um, and by, hopefully in September we'll get all the work done. That's what we're shooting for. Uh, That's what, yeah. is, the old, is, is that the only vendor who could potentially do it? Um, it's not a real popular thing. It's not a real popular thing. Um, and he actually, I was expecting it to be more, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I mean, we looked around, he was but the one it. Um, that's, it doesn't meet bidding thresholds. Which is what, 50? 60. Okay. Yeah, we, we changed the policy of the oh. last board meeting and giving, um, oh man, you, you know all the lingo, I'm going to let you speak on this. Yeah, we adopted the uh, uniform um, construction cost of county act. Yeah, I think uh, you guys are on it too, I know the county is on it, everything else. To, so 60 is either in-house or contracted. Um, up to 60. To, yeah, mm -hmm. then up to 200. 60 to 200 is, is informal bidding. And, and then anything over is very formalized. Sealed bid, blah, blah, blah. Uh, which is nice. It's a, it's a no-brainer thing to do. It just makes a lot of sense. And it'll actually save the district a lot of time and money in the long run. Uh, being able to get done. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, just as I went around and went through it, I mean, even the guys, so the guys who scoped it, recommended, you know, for what you need, I contacted these people, which was the exact same name that, uh, that the county Department of Public Works had given me on that, because they actually gave me a few that they had used for various projects, but when I started talking to people on what it was, uh, these were the only people I could name that did. Are you talking to Robert Carson at all? I've talked to Rob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. His first step was, well, you're not going to like what I have to tell you. Yeah. No, but he's a good guy. I'm he's a great guy. guy. I, I like them all. Sure. I think Howard works with Rob. Yeah. Um, all, I, all of them have been incredibly right. helpful. Yeah. Sarah was very helpful in the meeting. Yeah. Um, and some of the other people were not quite as helpful. But uh, no, they've been, they've been really good to work with. I mean, they get it. They understand my frustration. And my frustration was obvious at this meeting in that why, we're, why we as an agency are being saddled with something that we have nothing to do with other than the fact that it runs through property that we own that we weren't even aware of, that was never disclosed, was never anything. Um, and you know, I'm not really going to get into a large legal battle with the county over a $40 billion project. I would never recommend that. Uh, especially given the nature of our relationship with the county in 101 different ways, uh, which is not something I would take on. But there are, with that said, 
My understanding is there's actually a couple cases uh, pending at higher court levels that might have some level of a ruling on this that might establish a level of case precedence. Uh, and we can always revisit the statute of limitations on these things that you do like that in seven years. Uh, so if there's some sort of case precedent that turns this around and says, oh no, it's this specific. It, you know, we can go back and revisit it at that point in time. Uh, but these things are everywhere, up and down the county. I've talked to attorneys, uh, uh, private who are defending people. I've talked to counsel uh, at the county and got their opinion. The county's dealing with a lot of these. A lot of Marin was developed at the same time. And uh, the shelf life, you know, they, they breached their shelf life. You know, uh, metal pipe and their conduct water isn't going to last a long haul and it's lasted 60 some odd years. So. The shelf life is 40 years ago. <laughs> You're exactly right. So anyway, that's your update on that. I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, was there anything else? No, no, I'll throw it to you. <laughs> um, then the other thing would be any requests for future agenda items. Well, I, I would like to just get a brief update on the maintenance facility. Yeah, hopefully I'll have something different for you right now. It's in the design review stage still. Uh, application was submitted. They wanted more information, um, contrary to some uh, comments from other members of the public that it was kicked back to being non-compliant, that it was 100% not accurate. They just said, we need more. So uh, we're going through uh, putting together exactly what we want to submit as the more, and then we want them to say, yes, if you submit these things, this will make it complete. We've met with Brian Crawford, met with uh, with Jeremy, uh, uh, met with uh, Tom Lai, uh, included Damon, included the chief uh, civil engineer. So we're just trying to go through and make sure that I don't also have to start signing civil engineer contracts yet for a project that they haven't even approved yet. There's no way we can complete it this year. No, 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 no. no. This is simply design review, then it's going to have to go through construction permitting. We always knew once it got pushed that we lost this year, that it would be next year, because a lot of the timing on when things are going to be done are also dictated by environmental factors. Uh, when we can demolish the old shit, when we can, you know, all of this is you know, kind of laid out very clearly in the environmental assessment report that we had done. Uh, and those October, What's that? Was it, was it October being noticed? Yeah, the fall. Um, so, you know, the fact that we're still in design review and then once we get done with that, then we actually have to get into actual construction uh, building permitting. Um, that's going to take some time. And until we've got all of that achieved, it doesn't make a lot of sense to push this to really put together the RFP for that. And then once we know from building permitting, we'll have a mud and civil engineering and really engaging civil engineering, then we'll be able to put together much more accurate cost estimate and everything like that. You know, right now, we have the concept. And we get, you know, we have some roundabout numbers based on concept, but they're just that. I wouldn't commit to any of them until we really get into the civil engineering of the, you know, the building designs, the construction designs, uh, not just architectural designs, but structural, uh, everything else, and then we'll know exactly what the requirements are. I just, I just hope that the dilapidated excuse yeah. thing stands uh, another winter. Hope is an understatement. Me too. Me too. Yeah, hope you said understand. the demo has to happen in October? Uh, in the fall. I don't know if it's October or well, well, yeah. uh, because of nesting birds and this, that, and the other thing. But do you have known um, special species around that area? I mean, uh, it's, we, we have that happen all the time. We do nesting surveys. and. Right. To determine what's nesting there and where and right. nothing is impacted. Uh, the and there was levels of evidence of certain things nesting within the structure itself. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. The structure is not impenetrable. But couldn't you seemingly could do one way um, entrances to get those nesting animals out, and then that would open up your window, construction window. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have to relook at what the environmental report said because it was pretty clear on this should happen during this time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can you can install one way like gate or doors basically and they can fly out but they can't fly in. Right. So you could get them out. 
Yeah, unfortunately, the evidence of the nesting is still there, and we'd have to bring that back out and do everything. And there, those are options. Yeah. You know, those are options. But there's other factors at play uh, as the uh, timing of things, too, uh, that were all kind of, like I said, laid out in that bio report. I'd have to really look at it. But that's where that's at. So there, there, there hasn't been any status update because we've been in this process for a little while. They gave it back to us um, with a lot of requests to say, great, you have 30 days, at which point we said, yeah, we're going to need 60 more um, as we kind of go through this. Uh, and they said, yeah, that's fine, whatever, whatever, because it, the 30 days involved us then responding and saying, yeah, we need to meet with the brass. What was that? Uh, when they gave us back their list of 18 additional items, that they wanted to see was when we kind of said, oh, yeah. we need a meeting. Yeah. You know, so that meeting took three weeks to set up. And then once we went through that meeting and said, okay, we're gonna go through every item on this list one by one. Do you really need this? Yeah, okay, maybe we don't need that. You know, I got the proper people in the room to say yay or, or nay, or here's what we mean, or here's what we clarify. And right now we're going through and putting together another part document that's gonna say, Here's what we intend to create and submit. Before we create and submit this, we want you to tell us, yep, if you create and submit that as described, that's what we're looking for. That's not saying they're still going to approve it. This, and then it goes to the Planning Commission, most likely, and then it goes on. So it's, it's a hell of a process, to put it mildly, for an accessory tenant. Is um, Bill Hansel's presentation still online? It's still on our website. Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. Is it easy to find? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just uh, highlight the uh, park department, and then you'll see park maintenance facility replacement initiative and all of his slides and designs and everything. And, everything. The, and he did like an hour long presentation that's still on there? Uh, all of the slides that he used are still on there. The okay. presentation was an hour long because we did a ton of QA with right. him. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That's not on there. Uh, the Q and A, like the yeah. meeting itself. Yeah, that's the thing we recorded. No, we weren't recording it at that point. You can get it from another source. Well, I, yeah, YouTube, uh, Marinwood well, CSD maintenance facility. It on, and you'll see what you can I find. I found it on our website, so uh, maybe that was something else I was looking at. Okay, because he did a help for the Yeah, yeah. Because as I mentioned to you, one of the Damon Connolly's aides had talked to me about. She was asking me questions about the size. Mm -hmm. You know the the driving side entrance versus the mm -hmm. more standard mm -hmm. entrance. I just wanted to kind of revisit that information. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we uh, talked about all of that with them as well, and then wondered why the county supervisor found it necessary to get involved in a maintenance facility project. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Out loud. Yeah, I know. I just I want to make sure I have good answers to those questions sure. myself. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, the building itself is, the enclosed space is still 1,300 square feet. The covered parking area is still 1,200 square feet. You're still talking about a, a building envelope of 2,500 square feet and then some fenced-in areas to basically right. bring all those things that are currently sitting outside, inside. It's still smaller than the footprint we're using. Right. And that's, that's the key. So unfortunately, there's a lot of... Uh, Let's just call it misinformation and propaganda floating around out there from a select few. Right. So there's your add on to Luke's park update. Anything else? No. But uh, was there anything for an actual future agenda? I will certainly add it as soon as we actually have some movement on there. I just feel like it's such a big issue. issue. It should be on. It seems like it should be on every agenda in case. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. I just think adding it to agenda to say we're at the same place we were last month is uh, doesn't really get us anywhere. Well, that doesn't hurt either, does it? Huh? I mean, because then at least we're being transparent to the public that sure. we are talking about it. Sure. Also, in future. Well, you'll be updating the bylaws. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and a couple things that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Get the PowerPoints ready. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't uh, know that these necessarily immediately need to go on a future agenda, or if at all, just a couple things to bring up. Mm -hmm. I already talked about the that we're still kind of in the status quo of Park Bay facility. On July 28th, um, the Bolding family is going to host a big celebration at the park, um, bringing out their family. They want to invite the community and open it up to anybody who would like to come. She's put together a flyer, hoping I can help distribute that or put it on social media or whatever. Um, yeah, we've got the plaque. It's in the park. Guys, the hardware it came with isn't sufficient. Um, to actually hang the plaque, so the park guys are just getting additional hardware and it'll go up out there. Uh, um, so they just, this is something they want to do and they want to open it up to any and all, whether you need Jenny or you just appreciate the park and the district or whatever, so that information will come up. And then the only other... Where, where is it going to hang? Uh, over right at the park. Where are you gonna, where's it going to hang? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, just to the right of the pool doors. Like on the cement wall yep. right there, um, where there's nothing currently. Uh, yeah, it'll look nice there. Uh, uh, it'll look nice there. And then. Uh, what was the date of that? July 28th. It's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. Yeah. They asked for the 27th, and we said, yeah, that's proof us. And is there a time like that? I don't know exactly yet, John, but as I learn more, I will let you know. I think they booked the park for literally like it's a just give us the day, charge us for the day, and uh, we'll figure out the rest on our end. But we can make that date work. Uh, I would assume nothing will start by before noon. Uh, a lot of people from out of town. I don't uh, start before noon, so. Uh, it's not a blessing. And then uh, John Campo, I'm sure, is familiar, but uh, through what is past the, what is known as Prop 68. Um, and the uh, California Department of uh, Parks, um, their Office of Grants and Local Services, there's uh, good opportunities for funding to uh, be passed through from this down to even a small agency as ours. Uh, I'm anticipating probably minimum awards of uh, 200 grand on this. Um, I've got our name in the mix, I've already done all the steps. What program would you just follow? Um, oh, geez. Um, Access, oh man, I know you're gonna quiz me on what exactly it's called, and I wrote it down on the last one. I don't have it with me. But what's the what's the gist of it? Basically, yeah. it is uh, uh, replacing equipment. Okay. And then we would pool equipment. Uh, right now, one of the things Luke and I are uh, talking about is actually the playground equipment. Playground. Okay. Like getting rid of this aging equipment, putting in brand new playground right. equipment um, in the parks. Uh, Two hundred grand, you can make a good dent. Yeah. And that's the kind of stuff that qualifies. Maintenance stuff doesn't qualify. Uh, they're looking for things like that that actually uh, get touched by mm -hmm. the public. Yeah, I think one of the challenges is we're not an underserved community. Being it is a challenge, but I still think we'll wind up getting funds. We just won't get as much as we yeah. might. Right. You know, but for right. somebody small like us, right. if the minimum awards are two hundred grand, and the chances are pretty good that we'll get a minimum award, yeah. well, two hundred grand is nice. Actually shot yeah. in the arm. Yeah. So as I learn more, I mean, that's a ways out. Yeah. I'm in the initial stages. I've submitted all the proper paperwork to California Department of Parks. They know more interested. They have all of our data, everything that they need and requested at this point in time to make sure that we're on the radar and uh, considered as applied. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? So then, uh, next month, Luke, will you be giving us a report of where would we have gone this month? The Panhandle? Is that what you like? I'm, I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> In order to stay somewhat uh, involved in the... I think that would be great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, just use that month as the... Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that was what we would have done this month. And there's the pertinent issue of the sinkhole happening. Right, so, so we can just kind of look at those a month in arrears. If next month we were to do, say, the pool, then the following month we'd hear about the pool. Mm -hmm. Are you not sure? Okay, we can add that. Okay, are we done?
done. Uh, you know, I actually did have something else I wanted to mention. Well, so the, this is the time to do the, that. The, um, the, the trail project that I've been working on is getting really close. So James Raves is somebody I work with that's been working with Eric on the language for the permit to enter. So per Marinwood is giving the county the permit to enter to begin work. And Eric, James, and I agreed upon language. The lawyers are looking at the language and hopefully. And, um, and then soon after, that we hope to begin construction. Um, so, possibly a couple of weeks. Wow. Wow. That's, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, we're, we did our CEQA process for the project. We had um, a lot of comments, majority overwhelmingly supportive of the project. Um, we had a few concerns on the Nevada side, just regarding access and parking and things like that. We drafted a, a response to comments, which we will post on our website and then send out to all the people that commented on it. And then we will, you know, likely approve the project and proceed. So I think the, the permit to enter is actually one of the last hurdles. Great. So, and it's a multi year project, right? Yeah, it won't be done this year. So. But I think we're super close on that too, so. Um, the permit tender? Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. But you never know once you say, please review. Yeah, exactly. What they wind up coming back with. Um, because we certainly had a few uh, comments on it. But uh, nothing that changed the scope of what we were trying to do, I don't think. And then I think when we looked and talked about it amongst the three of us, we said, okay, well, here's what would make sense. And I was very comfortable with it. Yeah. And I, uh, I, uh, I, think, I would think that they would be comfortable. We're, we're comfortable. No, I don't mean you guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, no, so good. And I think if we have some resolution on that, then as soon as we do, we'll add that as a specific topic on the agenda to discuss it. Right. That'd be awesome. Yep. Awesome. That's why we're meeting monthly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, and then thank you guys. I know the last few months have been hard just getting more and everything else, but I always appreciate the efforts to get together. It is helpful for us. Thank you. Okay. Anybody not going to be around on July 23rd? I think I'm sure I should be. Further than I'll be here, yeah. Okay. And I'll continue to communicate with Ann about next steps so as she continues to bring me interested. So, fingers crossed. And we'll go from there. Uh, and uh, maybe by the next month, she'll be on. If there's nothing else, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Nice to move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Good night. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. It's such a pleasant meeting.